Today, our group is presenting to you on a topic entitled, Reabsorb CO2 So You Don't Have To, Combating Climate Change Through the Use of Drought Resistance Bamboo. My name is Samantha, and my group mates will introduce themselves throughout the presentation. Hello, my name is Camille Sanchu, and I will be presenting our goals and why we chose our topic for our poster project. Our title is called We Absorb CO2 So You Don't Have To, and this is a little homage to who plants and all they do for us. Um, so basically our goal is to insert the HVA1 gene, which comes from barley, into um, Tula bamboo, which is a type of bamboo that absorbs high amounts of CO2. And the reason we want to do this is because, as we know, climate change is a huge problem in the world right now. And so our idea sprouted from the rainforests and how they're able to absorb a lot of CO2 and produce a lot of good oxygen and take up that greenhouse gas. But unfortunately, we don't have that here in California. And so we wanted to take a plant that absorbs a high amount, which ended up being bamboo. They have a high, a higher ability to absorb CO2 than trees because they grow faster and because they um, sprout up like very fast. Um, and so that was kind of where our idea came from. And so we are inserting this barley HVA1 gene into it which has a drought resistance and that will be able to make our bamboos be here in the U.S. so we can help stop climate change or help prevent it in a way. Um, so thank you so much. Hello my name is Aaron and I'm going to be talking about the methods of expression for our gene. So what we're going to do first is modify the PAM2314 plasmid in order to incorporate our promoter or the CAMV. Then we will isolate the Bambusa Tola genomic DNA and then it will utilize that to utilize uh, as an HVA1 gene template. After utilizing it as a template, we will transfer the HVA1 gene template into our plasmid or what else is called the PAM2314. After transferring it into the plasmid, we will develop the HVA1 gene or the drought resistant gene that we're using from the barley using the, P the plasmid or the PAM2314 plasmid and formally insert the gene into the bamboo. So I'll be presenting on how we will be using the new plasmid and introducing it into the bamboo. We'll be using agrobacterium, which we could use to replicate the desired gene with the plant promoter. Using the plasmid, we can introduce the gene without damaging the cell. This is a natural bacteria that transfers gene into the plant and using agro filtration, it will be introduced into the bamboo leaf where it, will, where it will allow for the transfer of the desired gene to the rest of the plants. The expression of the HVA1 gene will allow the bamboo plants to survive in a wide variety of climates and allow for more areas to benefit from the absorption of greenhouse gases. So we chose to use agrobacteria because this is a natural process that plants already currently use. It doesn't damage the cell and it also isn't a bacteria that inserts its own plasmid into the cell already. Now we'll talk about um, our location, the location and modifications that we made for our plasmid. So this gene is located in the embryo of the barley. The name of the vector we will use to modify the bamboo gene in order for it to be drought resistant is called the PAB1. It also goes by the name of plant expression vector. Lastly, from our poster, we have the gene diagram from Barley, as well as the references on the bottom. Thank you. All right. So now getting into the details on more about the HVA1 gene and what happens when it's overexpressed and the byproducts and what other cascade of events this leads to in, in the physiology of plants with this gene. 
we could see an increase in gene expression and transcription factors involved in resiliency in harsh environments. What caught my, as soon as I started reading this article and stuff that I've come across in other classes and are these heat shock proteins, uh, HVA1 gene expression increases HSFA6 transcription factors. And pretty much these proteins and, and factors involved with, and, uh, and their actual effects in the physiology, they're responsible for repairing and maintaining the three-dimensional structure of proteins, ensuring proper folding, stability, and act as chaperones as seen here on this video. This doesn't display the actual heat shock transcription factors we're playing around with, but this sort of gives you an idea of what's going on for how these heat shock proteins are involved in proper folding of, of proteins, essentially. So there's that, the prevention of protein aggregation, such as just the accumulation of misfolded proteins. They, if these heat shock proteins can can refold these proteins and ensure their their function is still still intact with their structure, of course. And they also play a role in stabilizing and increasing the integrity of cell membranes, since since that's very important in in pretty much the the overall structure of a cell is its cell membrane. This is just more info information right here on these transcription factors and heat shock proteins and how exactly they, when they are activated, such as when there's heat shock or increased reactive oxygen species or toxins in the environment, these guys get produced and help mitigate the effects of such harsh environments. They're also seen in humans and in coral reefs, such as when in the prevention of, of bleaching of coral reefs, heat shock proteins are, are produced. Uh, next off, we also see an increase in, or I should say the actual phenotype of these plants with the HVA1 gene being overexpressed does induce a different phenotype when compared to the wild type here. This is a wild type such as just a normal plant species without the HVA1 gene. And then this is an HVA1 overexpression species. You can see here, there's increased growth in the roots and branching. This is gonna come in handy when there's very little water in the environment. It also regulates this ABA pathway, uh, stromatal, stomatal closure in sea plants and overall just to pretty much prevent the loss of water or excess of water, such as like if your kidneys were regulating water and you did not have enough, it's gonna, wow. those organs are gonna help you to prevent further water loss in, in cases of uh, of not enough water, of course, in your environment, wherever you're at. Uh, ABA mediated pathway, what else could we say about that? Covered all of that. Yeah, stomatal regulation, adaptive growth, root elongation, branching, prevents the, the excess water from leaving. And lastly, but not least, we'll go over a bit more on uh, reactive oxygen species and what these guys are. And as seen here in our article, HVA1 gene overexpression does lead to overall lower levels of ROS species in uh, going back to heat shock proteins, we can see here there's a, 
how these proteins act as chaperone proteins uh, to protect the mitochondrial components from degradation, proteolysis. Do, 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 do. Go over that. And then to go over the, here we are. So this suggests that the high tra higher transcript levels of this antioxidant enzyme leads to accumulation of the enzyme, which helps the HVA1 overexpression lines to survive better under heat stress by maintaining lower, lower ROS levels. And reactive oxygen species are pretty much what they're naturally occurring in, in organisms to to regulate apoptosis for senescent cells, microbes, or damaged cells for them later to be replaced. But if those guys happen to, if these levels so happen to be too high, then of course that'll lead to detrimental effects in, in the organism's physiology overall. So we'd, overexpression of HVA1 is, would be needed to keep these ROS levels in check and preventing from prevent them from causing more than what's needed in terms of like the cellular damage to healthy cells and yeah that is about it right there thanks for tuning in I think I just went over every slide here more on ROS species here and it's the uh, pathophysiology of ROS species and organisms. Of course, we went over the article. Oh uh, yeah, this is actual uh, a schematic of the ABA signaling stomatal closure pathway in, in plants. So HVA1 overexpression does have an effect on maybe higher levels of this pathway being induced, I would imagine. So yeah, what, from before the ABA pathway is, in, is activated versus when it's activated, we see the stomatal closure here to reduce water loss. Went over that. This is more on the proteins and pathways involved in an ABA dependent, independent pathways. The responses here by the organs and shot proteins went over that and that's it